Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Self the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this and that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Like <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. Undoubtedly, the celebrations of Christmas are still in the air, and the new year is already upon us. And we, the advocates, are keeping things seasoned and spicy. Sandra is going to do some accounting in search of our national returns on investment, that is to say. Um, she's not laughing to the bank. Saidi, on the other hand, is reflecting and projecting. I guess the turn of the year has this effect. Yet it seems to come up with more questions than answers. Akene also takes us back to law school. For some of us, it's a first. Mine, never been. She's advocating against a certain pattern of mischief. Chuka is going no holds barred against the NTA. Oh. It is at this point that I do a disclaimer and say that the views of Chuka are the views of Chuka, and he has never been one to follow the pack. I doubtlessly will be staring the hornet's nest. Um, I, I will take on a certain notorious matter to do with Netflix and the first temptation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Pretty heavy stuff. So let's wait and see after the break. Time for another disclaimer. The views of this Ameka are entirely his views. That is unless others agree with me. On Netflix, religion and censorship. Christmas is a season of love and thanksgiving when we recall the birth of Jesus Christ, who Christians believe is the son of the almighty God and part of the Holy Trinity. Yet in this season, a new movie from producers in Brazil is sparking fresh controversy this Christmas um, for the, the global video streaming uh, giant Netflix over its decision to include the movie as part of its Christmas special. The movie is called The First Temptation of Jesus Christ, produced by you know, a little known Brazilian production company. And this movie has already found a lot of controversy for, for subscribers, not just subscribers of Netflix, but in fact, over two million signatures have been out calling for the ban um, of the movie and indeed the cancellation, because we're now in a cancel culture of Netflix. Even here in Nigeria, um, where Pastor Johnson Suleiman has been asking worshippers to cancel their Netflix subscription, while some even have called for protests across all Netflix business offices. Now, the production, although a satire, continues to elicit heated debate. And I thought to share my perspective regarding the wider subject of art, religion, and censorship in an increasingly digitally connected world. The first thing is the re recognition that Netflix is not a traditional broadcaster the way we used to know broadcasters in those days. Now, this movie that's available on Netflix pl platform is just like thousands of other movies. It is not a scheduled broadcast. And, and Netflix, as you know, is an on-demand video library. That's essentially what it is. It requires you to actually select the said movie from a menu of thousands of other movies. It is not aired in that sense. As some people say, it's been aired on Netflix. It wasn't produced by Netflix. It was acquired by it, nonetheless. And it does not take up any scarce spectrum. So it's not the typical like NTA or AIT or anything as we know it. But I missed the call to cancel Netflix. My advocacy is something somewhat more nuanced which is important for me is that we, we, we see the, the different significance over centuries that art and science have always conflicted with religious beliefs. That, that is a fact. But indeed, without art and science, humanity as we know it today will remain backwards and indeed very brutish. You know, I recall at the time, you know, reading through history when Copernicus and Galileo said that, um, you know, that the Earth wasn't actually the center of the universe, and um, he was, Galileo was put through the Inquisition. So while we as Christians have the right to express our anger about the movie, as some have even called for its ban, let us not push boundaries towards extremism. 
Because the platform has added this movie on its catalog doesn't mean that it is satanic. I agree the movie pushes some buttons, but that is art and that is life. People tend to forget that artists, especially in these days, will purposely contrive controversy because, according to them, controversy sells. But I will say this, though, to close. Even the Bible recognizes the primacy of free choice. The apple, that apple we read about in the Genesis, in the book of Genesis, was actually in the Garden of Eden, right there, the bad apple. And by the way, for those of us who are uh, more of faith, let's remember that when Jesus walked the street of Jeru Jerusalem, he was called even worse names. Indeed, the Lord Jesus Christ that we worship was indeed crucified. He died and was buried and he rose again. And today is a symbol of sal our salvation, at least for Christians all across the world. I think Jesus Christ will be all right, with or without our help. It is us that need his help. Can I jump into this one? Yeah. Let me, want to let jump. me jump in. Yeah. I want to jump first. I think you, know, you, you made a point, and I tried to make, uh, make yourself. You said without art and science, um, humanity would be brutish. And then you gave the example of Galileo. I mean, what comes, in, what comes to my mind is that mm -hmm. in as much as art could sometimes lead the way in terms of giving people a vision of something they may have missed yeah. because they were having a religious interpretation of the truth, um, so has religion, you know, vice versa. I think my understanding is that, and I you know, stand to be corrected, there was a perception that the earth was flat. And it was through a Christian understanding because there's a verse in Isaiah that says, God sits above the circle of the earth, that one of the explorers pursued that and against the odds discovered that the earth wasn't flat. I don't think it's exclusive to the arts that people have seen progression. Um, what I, my offense in a way, because I feel the film is offensive, is that I think they're cowardly and they're have, have you watched I'm the movie? No, no, I've read enough. I've read around. No, I'm so, coming, but you haven't on. watched the hold movie. Hold on, hold That's on. That's my point. No, no, no. But those who have, have quoted <laughs> yes. bits of it, which I took the time to read off. A lot of people, I would tell you that. I will um, watch the movie. Ninety percent of people who've talked about it have not seen it. No, I'm not interested in seeing it yeah. because oh, good. because in the, the, re the reason I'm saying that is, I just feel that it's exploitative and it's provocative. Freedom of speech doesn't mean you should go trying to offend people. You release this movie at Christmas time when you know people are wanting to give respect to to God because Jesus is God to those who believe. And you want to now demean him and make him in your own image, the way you feel. And you're ridiculing the image that people respect and revere. Just to make a point, you know, when I went to film school, um, because I find there's a lot of bias in the way people interpret truth. When I went to film school, I noticed that a lot of the directors, the filmmakers, they were only interested in making the world in their own image. So maybe they smoked. So every time they want to express someone who's stressed, the person has to be smoking, because that's their interpretation of tense, tension. I don't have a problem if people want to be gay. But, is there a but my problem is, but is when there... they want to bring gay, gay, that... gay vision into the Christian faith. Why oh, but, not have but, your so own? So a Christian cannot be gay. Can I ask that question? That, it's not, no, 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 it's, not, it's, it's not mutually compatible. Oh, no, with the I, faith. I disagree with you. Because no, even you the Pope know. recognizes recently yeah, no, 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 in some of his No, the Pope is not necessarily the measure of truth. No, so no, so what, let's not I get mean, into but, that. What I'm saying is that so don't go and try yeah. and castigate. How? No, no, let's leave that because no, it'll take a while to no, dissect. I, I My that, issue is really that. I'm sorry, Chuka, I want to land this point. My issue is really that you want to provoke, you want to promote something you believe. Go ahead. But if you come to start trying to encroach on what other people believe and demean it, know that it, it works both ways. Because if people go and now show you another version of what you think is true, you will call it gay bashing. So that's where I see there's hypocrisy. You don't want people to, to throw stones at you, but you want to throw stones at them. I think no, it's, it's slightly, no, 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 slightly imbalanced there. I don't think they don't want you to fight back. And I don't think they were fighting you. You see, okay. the problem is this. You are seeing it from your point of view. Okay. What's so wrong with somebody? I don't know. I've not watched this film, so I can't say much. But it seems it's all about Jesus being gay. Yes. Uh -huh. It's not let's, actually Jesus being gay. Or what? It's a character. Um, the character of the character of Jesus mm -hmm. brings someone home who is actually the devil, who now implies at dinner that uh, Jesus is his lover. Yes. Right. Right. It's not right. that Jesus is. So that was the first temptation. That mm. look, I am. This is my lover. Yes, that's, that's right. actually the, the yes. thing where people yes. now imply, therefore, that Jesus is gay. Ah, Not that he I is see. gay, I mean, actually. Yes, but yes. they said Mary also but, is but weed smoking. Yeah, but like, you see, um, but you see uh, okay, weed smoking. The thing, is, the thing is this. Mm -hmm. you, you, in the same way you're saying that they are provocative, I don't mm -hmm. think they are. Okay. They are not because it's a free world. 
and it's free, and, yeah. and, and, and it's free for you not to watch that film. It's mm. so free that you can actually miss that film completely. Like now, I haven't watched it. I can decide not to watch it. Uh, I probably will anyway to find out what it's all about. <laughs> um, I, I but, won't, and I'm looking you know, off. I, I, I said, think no, I'm no, subscribing from Netflix. No, wow. that is that. No, but just to know that that's that's, 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 that's no, but it's that's, within my rights. No, 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 no
a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Self the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. A stock take is like a report card. It may be painful, but it's always profitable to do so. As the year draws to an end, companies all over the world are counting their gains and mourning their losses. Individuals are not left out of this rat race. It's the hope of every investor, after a long year of financial activity, taking risk and venturing to deep waters, that they sit to enjoy their dividends at the end of the year. They say it's a spice that adds taste to the merriment of the Yuletide. One would think that the Nigerian government, like every right-thinking government, would also be counting their gains after a long year. For isn't that part of the reason for the, for the high and lofty budgeting and planning? Regrettably, any anticipation of a bountiful return on investment is far from reality, as an expedition through the event of 2019, both politically, financially, or otherwise, rather reveals an abysmal performance. This leads me to the twist of my advocacy today. From the very first straw, being the 2019 general elections, we invested in an evidently flawed electoral process, leading to the re-election, or should I call it, appointment of the incumbent president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A major general, as he's now being called, is perhaps our well-deserved return on investment. If our health systems are still heavily plagued with grossly inadequate and ineffective medical equipment and facilities, minimal regard for health professionals, a threat to import medical practitioners from the abroad, while our homegrown practitioners are left to export themselves to a place to find acceptance and greener pastures, then I think our government has failed woefully by investing absolutely zero value on human life, hence the higher turnover of debt rates at, that could have been easily avoided as our return on investment. The annual returns of an invested corrupt judicial system sees the hollow temple of justice swirling in full circle in favor of political shenanigans, masquerading as Democrats, first evidence in the removal of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, and then to the last straw, invading a court in session to rearrest a common man who had been granted bail, thus displaying an utter disregard of the rule of law. One wonders how honorable this court really is. The fact remains that the challenges we face as a nation are innumerable, and as we mourn over the losses of this year, let us also not our hope for the coming year. The taxpayers are ready in solidarity to continue, in, to continue investment in our nation, and while we advocate and wait for the government to turn a new leaf and map out their positive New Year revolutions, our voices will not be silenced. Neither will our collective will for a better Nigeria be stifled, death penalty or not. Mm. Let me say that, um, yes, 2019 has been a difficult year. Um, if you look at all the indices and, and, and you've pretty much drawn everything out from the rule of law, the election cycle, health, uh, Rural, education, education. Um, everything. Too it's um, employment, you know, um, foreign direct investment. It's, it's been poor. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's really a challenge of leadership. And we talked about this um, during, uh, before the, we, we started this, that it is a, we need leadership that you know, is ready to make the sacrifices. Um, we talked about it because I think that the foundations on top of which we build this Nigerian system 
it was not designed for, for you know, um, how should I put it, growth. You know, we have spots of what we tend to be, but this, the way the system comes and brings us back. Um, so it, it's a challenge. Um, and you know, look, for me, and, I, and I've talked about this on the show before, it, it appears that all we know how to do in this country and we know how to do well is to fight for power. So if you look at we are in 2019, we just finished an election in March. We're already talking about 2023. 2023. And the political actors are all scheming about who to be president, who to kick out, who to start. I mean, no one's talking about health. No one's talking about education. Um, no one is talking about, the way you know. Forward, yeah, so there's, there's a race for, for, how should I put it? I don't want to use the word. I'm on television. Um, <laughs> but there's a, there's, a, there's a race for going backwards rather than going forward. Um, and it's, it's, it's scary because I, you know, I, when you look at you have young kids, um, there, there's no sight of hope. Not even, there's no sight of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need to be building because we, we need to say, um, unfortunately, you know, the way politics works is that is every four years, not annually. So it's uh, the way we've operated um, that, and we need to say, in four years, are we going to see progress in health, in education, in, in, in elections, in security? Um, are we go I don't see it. I don't see it. And, and, and that's what's more frightening. No and that's, yeah, and that's what we should look at recently in National Assembly, 37 billion to renovate. Yes. So th th that appears to be priority? Yes. I, I think, I think um, 2019 has been... Um, year of stock taking and doing some sort of reset and it's a challenge for us there are myriads of problems that we can continue to see it you know till the end of the year but it, it poses a challenge to us so what do we want in 2020 i would you know suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable how? We can, How? from your local government uh, representatives right down to your governor, whoever. Because 2020, the government will ask for a lot from you. VAT is going up, taxes would be enforced. Now, if they're doing this, it, it, it now uh, it's, it's imperative that you demand for service. You demand for all of the social uh, uh, services, amenities. amenities we're mm -hmm. talking about. So it's a reset, it's a challenge for us. So mm. What do we want to do? I mean, I, also I'm looking at, I like the fact that you're using the expression return on investment because that brings you back to a business, yeah. you say, mode. And that's part of what I feel is seriously lacking. And that, that's when he's saying, what do we do? My mind is still struggling with how do you communicate? Because I feel that to a large extent, the people at the leadership have been blinded by the money factor and the power for power's sake. So they're not reasoning in a very rational way because we've said this on The Advocate before that the thing they want, if they would only just, it's like a farmer, put the seed in the ground, it, there'll be enough for everybody. But eating the seed is, is just like yours, just squandering even your own fortunes down the line. So it's so short-sighted. It's like, it's, it's a kind of madness. It's a mania. That's really, so when you look at it, it's like, how do you get these people to see that if we invest when there is surplus, even you oh, will be laughing yeah, to the exactly. bank. Why are you consuming? Are you happy to keep consuming? And then the very basis or foundation on which you hope to reap, you're destroying its future. So I just feel that there's something fundamentally wrong with the psyche of the leadership. Or is it that when they get in there, they're mesmerized by all the money and the power? Or is it that they start off being like that? And so I'm thinking, OK, how do we make it so that, yes, in addition to getting people to hold their leaders accountable, we begin to put systems in place that force us to operate like a business you know, model where you know, you, your systemic systems are put in place that are automated, that you know, take out the human factor as much as possible and build in accountability every step of the way. So. Well, I, 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 you see, the thing is, it will take time anyway, even if we're ready to change. <laughs> change takes time. So it's, it's going to be a bit difficult. But... Um, um, I, I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted mm. um, and everybody preparing to go into the system 
uh, is going into that system mm. and actually accepts that system. A few people don't. Mm. So it's going to be a very difficult task to get out of that mode. Right. Um, it will be a slow and steady thing. I think that what has happened, I'll tell you the thing, some of the things uh, Buhari is doing, actually, funny enough, uh, it's almost as if, what, much as I don't think he's doing much to improve the country, really, but I think he's doing some things that when he leaves will tighten certain areas like what? Give us that some. people will <laughs> want to, uh, even your tax that you're talking about, he's tightening it. That's good, mm. he would, but they would chop the tax, mm. or I'm just speaking like a true Nigerian now. <laughs> but let's hope, let's even get more tax, right? Okay. So he's doing a lot of these things, so that by the time he goes... I agree, I agree with you in that. that you, he's doing some things uh, like that. Like what Saidu is saying, yes. um, I see the connection there, mm. that citizens should get more involved. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the more this tax system comes yes. up, yes. I think he's going to push the citizenry yes. to yes. demand yes. more because <laughs> now yes. a lot more of... Because yeah. we, it, we've been a rentier economy where you take money, but now the taxes, it's, it's, it's going to be in interesting to see how that unfolds. Well, the, the plight of Nigerians is so many. We can't begin to recount all of the challenges and problems we face. But I had hoped that we would focus on evaluating our role in nation building as much as that of governments for we're all in it together. After the break, Saidu does a more focused type of projection. We're barely in 2020, and yet year 2023 is taking on a Magadon or appointment with destiny type significance. Who succeeds President Buhari? If you're a keen observer of the Nigerian political space, you would have known by now that there are subterranean moves and realignment of forces all in preparation for 2023 election, election circle. Even when the president himself has stated that he's not interested in who succeeds him. In his own words, President Buhari said, succession to me is very funny because if I find anybody, I will create more problems for him or her. Let those who want to be president try as much as I did. Whether you are a fervent critic, whaler as they're called, of the president, or you're one of his ardent fans, Buhari as they Buharist, as they, as, they call, as they call themselves, one thing is certain. His tenure expires on the 29th of May, 2023. We must come to the realization that 2020 is most likely the only year remaining that will be dedicated to serious, serious issues of governance. So 2021 to 2022 will be years of real politicking. Hence my questions. Who succeeds the president? What kind of leadership would our country require post 2023? What issue should the debates be centered on? Who are the front runners in the major political parties? Will there be geopolitical considerations? If, if we must get Nigeria working for all Nigerians, this is the time to begin this conversation. I think um, I, I like the fact that you're asking those questions and maybe as a result of some of the conversations we've had leading uh, yeah. and beginning to realize that actually sometimes we have this victim mentality almost like we can't do anything you know we're oppressed but actually we, we there's a lot we can do so in terms of even saying what kind of debate should we have Absolutely. we have the media houses we can begin to have those discussions and drive the conversation towards what the we topics want. we want Absolutely. and and then in that way we begin to frame the kind of leader we want and force those people to align themselves. Absolutely. So, you know, rather than feeling, because, you know, like I say, no, that we're very good at fighting for power for power's sake, we can actually set the tune. You know, he who pays the piper, so back to Dictates the taxpayer. The we can find ways to dictate the tune. We're not as weak and victimized as we think we are. We are weak and victimized. <laughs> and, um, and we've entered the Stockholm Syndrome. You know, I mean, look, the media you talk about is, is controlled by the political players. I've worked yeah. in the media space, the top media. The only hope we have is social media, yeah. mm -hmm. which democratizes voices and opinions. Mm -hmm. um, when, but when we talk about traditional media, I can tell you that by maybe one or two, mm -hmm. every other person is aligned to one political Leader side of this narrative of fight for power. Yeah. I can tell you that, pure and simple. Every other major media um, newspaper, TV, they're all aligned. There's, they're factionalized already. And it's not a factionalized about ideology as you find in the US or whether, you know, um, rights, uh, small government, big government. This is about 
ethnic, this is about politics, uh, persons. It has nothing to do with conversations over narratives, over uh, should we restructure, should we not restructure, should we depend on oil, should we, not, should we be more solar, should we have a green economy, what kind of tax. It has nothing to do with that. It's about, you know, where you're from, this is my, this is my turn. That's what the conversation yeah. is all about. Yeah. And so it's interesting that uh, and when, you, when you put your, your advocacy, it's instructive to me what, what the president said. And he said, you know, if I may quote what he said, he says, if I find someone, I'll create more problems for that person. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is the president in his own words. And this is the man who says things. Um, he's actually, you learn more from him um, when he says things that are not scripted. Yeah. Because he's speaking, and he, what he means, he means this thing, hundred mm. mm. percent. If you so, if you if you bring out your head now that you're interested, yeah. and in you're going to be you're going to face exactly in yeah. his own words, yeah. and that's we see these calculations even playing out now. Now, yes, exactly. you know, in terms of the realignment, in terms of the, 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 there's, a, there's a big national newspaper that suddenly became anti uh, the, the the president in the last couple of days. Um, and it's happening. Yeah. So the realignment is happening. The people who want to, who, and, and that's this man. That's what he's saying. And you need to take him seriously. So I think that um, the conversations around what should happen in 2023, I think we, we're going to have to depend a lot on driving that conversation, not through the media space, traditional media, but through social media, social media. and being able to drive that narrative. It's not even enough because social media is, just, is limited to a certain, um, but the vast majority yeah. of people are ignorant, yeah. uneducated, right. do not have the economic power, and they're just there looking for, when it's time for election, give me my salt, my rapper, my 2000 naira, and, and I'll vote, vote whoever. You. They're already captured. Let's just, let's, let's face that fact. Sorry, I'm being negative, but that's... <laughs> my, my well, I think, I, I, think I really think that it's important that we're having this sort of mm. conversation right now at this time, and it's, it, we shouldn't always wait until it gets to that point yeah. before we begin to demand, okay, what we want, before we begin to engage in, you know, debate and all sorts. So um, I was having a conversation earlier all of the persons, you know, the people from minority group, the presidential can candidates in the just concluded 2019 elections, where are they today? If Most of them, their voices are silent. I don't know, they're doing and individual so, things, like if you observe them, but they're not, but you they're know, not, they're, not, they're doing their individual. You came out, yeah. you came out for the nation. Mm. You wanted, you were interested mm. in, in the nation, yeah. in power. And all of a sudden, things are going to, and then your voices are silenced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is where I come in. I think it's important for day right now, you know, just, Contributes to nation building. Look at Shore, um, look at where I got him. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I was, yeah, I'm yeah. sympathetic to some of them because <laughs> the capital they expended, even in running for office, and, yeah, and the way the, the, the air was, in a way, sucked out of sucked them out because of, them. of the level of you know, infringement. I think it can be very demoralizing. You need to go back and recuperate a little bit, you know, after all that. That's, that's my take, anyway. And perhaps learn that you might never <coughs> win an election. Unless you come together. Maybe Unless they form a coalition. Yeah. I, I do agree with you there. Um, if you're interested in, in, in power uh, for the next election cycle, this is the time to start. Yeah, and you don't wait six months or nine months to wait. You start to, this is the time to start building co coalitions. This is the time to start building a narrative about why you want power. Yeah. When I say start to engage government, engage them positively as well. You could come up with suggestions. Mm. If you feel you know, there are policies that they need to look in another direction, it mm. shouldn't be always critical of the government. True. If you have solution, come up with solutions. You understand? It's our country anyways. Do you understand? We should not take an anti-Nigeria mm. posture. No, nobody says it's, it's, it's not anti Nigeria. It's not anti Nigeria way, because to criticize the government. Understand the government, we're in a democracy. Mm. So tell us what you want. No, no. See, yes. this is, this is, the narrative is simple. If you are um, in government, if I say things that even Ab initio will be will be purposeful for government. Right. It will, on the face of it, it will sound negative, negative. to you because you're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't That's think I, exactly. I don't think I'd escape exactly. that. Because how do yeah. grown men get mm. up, mm. leave education, leave roads, leave everything, and just go straight to renovating? Yes, a that's national obviously assembly. a problem. It tells you that there's a that cost the, seven billion to, mm. to put up in the first place. Yes. Mm. So okay. make noise about it, yeah. and they will they yeah. will drop the idea. Well, like Sandra said stock take and projections and overall prof, for profitable activity. Here's where we take stock of your feedback. 
our last man standing, and sure as we are rest. Pastor Momo says a lot, but here's the gist. To stay silent is not optional at this time. What I see playing out in Nigeria now, that they have been pushed to the wall, is that rather than revolting, they prefer to turn the fight to themselves by infl inflicting pain on one another. A bleak prognosis, Pastor Momo. We trust you are not a prophet. On bleaching babies, Bridget Miller Taylor says, bleaching a baby's perfect, soft, delicate, unblemished brown skin, I can't form coherent thoughts about that. Neither can we, Bridget. On the same topic, Torches Unwa Christ says, who would want a bleached child, talk less of a baby? I came across that video of a child immersed in a pool of chemicals and her skin exfoliated. I almost gave up on life. Please, Torches, don't give up. Unfortunately, there's still plenty of that for us to advocate against. Some of us might say our work is cut, for, cut out for us. Let's keep the partnership going. We together with you. Do keep your comments coming in our, crucial, in our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with the previous broadcast, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekene attempts to balance the scale of justice by introducing little matter of the mischief rule. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this and that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Interpreting a direction outside the original intention is just plain mischief, and even criminal or underhand. I was taught when I went to law school many years ago now that a rule of thumb when interpreting the law is to look for the mischief behind the law. It's called the mischief rule. What does this mean? It means that you need to get at the spirit behind the law. What was the intention of the law? What was it trying to remedy? So today, when you see people interpret the law in a way that seems to contradict the very essence of what the law was designed for, then you can be sure, well, excuse the pun, some mischief is going on. Plainly speaking, it's mischievous of us to apply the law in a way that does not deliver on the purpose of the law. It's like hijacking a vehicle that was meant to be going to a certain destination. You get in that vehicle and you make it go in the opposite direction to an, its intended destination. The vehicle hasn't achieved its purpose. Permit me to table some samples as illustration. As regards the obnoxious pension law that awards staggering lifetime pensions to ex-governors and public office holders, Mr. Tunde Bremo, Chairman House Committee on Information and Strategy in Defense of Lagos State's adamant stance not to repeal the said law states that, as long as the law did not contravene the constitution, state assemblies had the right to make laws for the benefit of the society in which they operate. Now, tell me, for whose benefit is awarding fat lifetime pensions to a few officials to the impoverishment of the masses? You know, Bijam question, Abi. Okay, we're told that Shore is a threat to national security and his use of the word revolution sufficient to warrant his continued illegal detention. And yet, so-called representatives of Mietiala, I'm not picking on them, in previous times made threatening statements that could be linked to life and death consequences with plenty of bloodshed in the wake of it, and they roam free with their cattle in tow. Bringing it close, closer to the everyday, SARS officials terrorize motor or road users like you and I to the enrichment of their pockets 
and they too insist that they do so under the legal ambit of benefit of society. Are we beginning to see a pattern here? Flagrant abuse and oppression in the name of law and supposedly in our best interest. The essence of my advocacy is to say that more than ever, what is in our best interest is to educate ourselves on the law so that we know when the law is being abused. We should make ourselves aware of the available ombudsman services that are set up to support us when we find ourselves in such predicaments. To name a few, you have uh, SERAP, you have, um, I'm trying to remember the other one, uh, Spaces for Change, hopefully they'll be coming up on the screen. And you even have the um, anti-SARS uh, SEGA link uh, movement. In a society that has laws and yet largely operates lawlessly, our chief recourse is to arm ourselves with knowledge and understanding. That way, when a lawless official tries to do mischief with the law, we can resist them with bold face and ask, who are you kidding? Let, let me say that uh, <laughs> the reality um, is that, at least from my point of view, is that our lawmakers and our law enforcement people are actually the number one people who break the, the system. So they, 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 they not only break the system, then they use, the, 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 like you said, the mischief. The, they go as, you know, it's like saying, oh, I'm here to control traffic. Yeah, that's your job. So that's what the law gives you. But you use that position to extort money from people. So, I, and, and then when, when you're called, say, oh, I'm doing the job. It's not the job that I was asked to do. And so, so that's where we find ourselves. Um, we, as I said this, look, we, we, we're in a position where, um, sadly, if we do not realize that the rule of law is not just the standard bearer of our humanity, but it is, it is actually at the center of, of progress because you're inviting chaos. You know, you're finding that, look at what happened in Ondo State the other day, some rumor about a pastor, and then before you knew it, the, the people ha begin to lose faith in, 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 in law enforcement and in, in security. People are just losing, and it's happening gradually, and it will come to, it will come to a head soon. Yes. And so you find policemen, I'm not holding brief for policemen, who are on the highways, they, they, they buy their own uniform, they fill their own cars. I have this. Uh, yeah, this is, right. I can they're not getting this. paid. So, yeah. so they get to the point where they now have to task us to collect money. To even part up to even yeah. Yeah. The, yes. uh, yeah. police station. I mean, so we, we, we have this system that is just awful. I, I, I mean, I, mean I, I, I don't, mm. yeah. So even if you go there with good intention, you'll be converted. You, you will end up because you have to fend for yourself. Wow. You know, so I, 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 I think that the first thing we need to do is recognize that we have a challenge. Recognize that the rule of law is paramount. Recognize that we have a system that is not giving its best right. to the majority of people. Mm -hmm. And then how do we bring confidence back so that I, when I see a policeman, you know, um, I will, I will, I'll feel a, a sense of trust. And then young people with dreadlocks. I mean, if my son is going out, I'm like, uh, you know, um, it's, it's not good. I think for, for me, uh, the entire judicial, uh, the justice system should be overhauled, primarily. Now, I, I just noted some things when you go mm, cool. uh, um, First, I, I we're made to believe that uh, justice is blind, right? So emotions are not, if you're not able to present your case, you know, with facts. We may know that you're guilty, but if you're not able to present it, then you'd lose the case, mm. right? Uh, the other thing is you talked about... Uh, so state what, what does that speak towards? I was, I'm you're talking about emotions, that you're talking about, um, you know, having uh, the emotional side to justice. Okay. You understand? I'm saying justice is blind, regardless. There's no emotion in justice. Did I talk you could about be right. Supposed side? to not be. Yes. Right. Did I talk about I, I, I I thought thought I Basically, you're trying to talk about um, the intention of the law. Yeah, it's not the emotion. It's not okay. the intention. You know, okay. So maybe I, I, what is the intention? I so if I did, if I picked up this cup and someone, someone picked up the, the motive. cup, someone may say, "Oh, I was picking it to bash your head," but you know, you have to know what's in my mind, and, and to get to that, you need to understand 
what is it? So, I'm, yeah, I'm so it's, it's now tied to motive. evidence. It's yeah. not no, emotion. So even yeah. the motive, you need to present your case. If yeah. you're not able to present that, regardless of what your intentions are, mm. if you're not able to present that before, Okay. the court of law, then it doesn't make sense. Well, I'm I not guess, I guess the point I'm making is broader than that. I'm talking about the law, how you apply the law. In. If, right. if so, the law so is, has I, an intention... I, I don't want to lose the other yeah, ones. And then on. you talked yeah, about we'll the state assemblies as well. Mm. I think, like I said, and I always say, we are... <laughs> the, our leaders are just a representation of us. Okay. We elected those leaders. And they have put a package, a very robust package for themselves. Mm. And they're telling you, look, we are entitled to this entitlement. Mm. By law, are they entitled to it? Mm -hmm. Do they have, is, is, is there a law that entitles them to do that? No, it's, there isn't. That's why I, it's I, there. I, I, but there's no, no law to stop them. The there's, there's, no, there's, no law to stop The state right? law. Don't forget that these are state assembly members. They mm. decide what no, but the remuneration is. If you notice what I said, I said he's referencing the constitution and he's saying the constitution allows them to allows make a law for the benefit. Yeah. But that's him interpreting his enrichment as a benefit, benefit to society. And it clearly wasn't the intention I of that empowerment. But he's they're, abusing, they're still, he's they're still abusing acting, that. Up, they're still acting so within the confines of... There's no law. No, yeah, it's an abuse. That, yeah. that, that I think the, it's left to us mm. to, to tell him mm. whether it is no longer for our benefit. Absolutely. It's obvious that In other it's words, not. but it's not. <laughs> yes, so yeah, so how do we tell them? He's just being mischievous. You know. but, yeah. Yeah. And then we, we, we talked about SARS. I'm just a little... I want us to be a little bit careful with how we generalize you know, because there are some of those uh, uh, gentlemen who have, you know, been doing excellently well. You know, it's very easy for us to, you know, use the few bad eggs to generalize I the rest. I want to say it's not a few bad eggs. I'm just, it's I'm just, it's I'm just, it's just saying it's I'm just saying that you just start today. Mm. Yes, but, we, but we, we find that the, the, the incidents, no, but, but, no, no, no. my point is mm. the incidents of brutality of SARS came with a climate, unfortunately I have to put the blame on this government. It's just, it created a, a, a cloud, a narrative that you can get away with certain things. Mm. Okay, so you find more brutality happening. Yeah, it's not just SARS, yeah, the yeah. army, the, the, yeah, the, the, there's more the, the, yeah, there's more brutality. There's, there's, there's a tendency that people are now beginning to see that I can get away with it. Yeah. If you remember, so, Occupy Lagos, even when Jonathan sent the soldiers in, uh, the soldiers were not that, yeah. It, it was not, we, and then we all ran back home. Yes, because we don't want trouble. But, it, you know, the whole thing, you know, I, by the way, I'm not, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not saying Jonathan did anything good or whatever. Mm -hmm. But brutality, wasn't uh, no, at certainly, that level. it wasn't at the level it is today. Today you are really scared. Of. Well, when the going gets tough, they say, the tough arm themselves with knowledge, I say, since knowledge is power. Chuka is getting tough on <laughs> NTA. <laughs> Chuka. Not Plus TV Africa. He's old enough to speak for himself. <laughs> uh, some would say that it's only a discerning viewer that can be a true critic. Judge for yourselves. So pick yourself up, NTA. NTA is Nigeria Television Authority, owned by the government of the nation. And on Monday, on what is prime 9 o'clock news, it was reported that Major General Buhari, Nigeria's president, sent atheists birthday congratulatory message to one Umaru Mutalab. Then, as has become customary, the Secretary to the Federal Government announced yet another retreat for civil servants, for whom he certainly has email addresses and telephone numbers. It was reported that the Inspector General of Police held a meeting with a, selected, a selection sorry, of top officers to take stock ahead of 2020. No, we were not told any more than that. And that was it for that news item. It is usual to have NTA inform us of a visit to the president by all sorts of people, ambassadors, governors, all sorts, but no news of the proper goings on in this very large country of 200 million people. There was news about a church which had an award ceremony on National Network News. I'm going to suggest that NTA in its present form be either shut down or open to partnership with private companies. Whatever is spent there right now is a precious waste of our slim resources, which can be used elsewhere. NTA is an embarrassment to the 60-year-old nation. The standard of programs is generally low, the news reading well below par. It is simply a series of announcements of the social events the president attends to. Not attends, attends to. The net result 
is that the image portrayed is actually one of a lazy, inept, and confused government, even if that may not be what the government is. That, and, it, and a confused government that believes the country is made up of unenlightened people who will be satisfied with a worthless coverage by NTA. And this is without even the psychophantic content of that same station. The Ministry of Information should deal decisively with the state of NTA, while Nigerians should demand better service or stop patronizing the network. You want to I'm jump in? <laughs> Um, I, I, I don't think you have been fair with um, the... You're like it's, an advocate of balance. Yes, yes, he's, he's, the bashing is so much. <laughs> One, I think there has to be a measure. What are you measuring NTA with? Are you measuring NTA with... BBC. BBC, Come you on. understand? <laughs> We're Africa. Even with channels. Do you understand? We're Africa. TV. Our people, don't, they're not as enlightened as you think. You have to communicate with them in the language they understand. Do you understand? NTA has the largest coverage in Nigeria. <laughs> right? Because they it's hope, government. That, that's because it's government. It is. Yes. So they reach, they reach a huge, a large number of right. audience. Which is why I'm And they have to commun communicate to them in, in a manner that they don't, they don't understand. So that might inform the, maybe the Dumbed language, or maybe they don't speak in some kind of uh, accent or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I know, I don't know, I don't know what the basis. But because, he mentioned what they're looking for. But that's not what that's, that's not true as argument. If you if you if you'd ask, if you'd, if I'll tell you that the NTA I know growing up, mm. yes. and the NTA we have today, yes. there definitely has been some Can I, movement. Say, okay. right. progressive, really? progressive. Yeah, they have. Say, I'm going to ask you a very important question. Uh, and all of us, okay. and, and that will form the basis of my own retort okay. to this. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when was the last time you watched? I was going to ask that same question. Yeah. I haven't watched NCA. Okay, so, so, so this I've is been it. watching you, you regularly. I, I know he does. I yeah. started he references it. Yeah. Once in a while, I yeah. do. Mm. So this is, this is my point. And I gave a speech somewhere uh, to a group of industry people and young people a few, a few weeks back. And I asked a question randomly and said, how many there was like um, 100 and something people in the audience? How many people here have watched NTA in the last week? And in a room of about 100 people, less than six people raised there. I don't think yeah. it was up to six people even. Mm -hmm. um, Ask that same question in, in uh, Zamfara uh, or uh, yes, in one of those places. Danger. That's the danger now. Do you understand? Listen, listen, yeah. understand. I, I, I'll tell you this. Um, you know, I, I, was, I had the good fortune of, of working in that sector as yeah. uh, head of uh, the regulatory uh, agency uh, for broadcasting. You find in parts of the north, there's we have a problem. Um, in in Adamawa, in Zamfara, in uh, uh, um, I mentioned what's the other state where there was actually no media, so people were getting uh, people were getting information from Cameroon. There was really no where's that Buniyadi where that where students were killed were slaughtered by by terrorists. Um, in 2000, I think it was 2013 or 14, there was a, virtually you could not get any radio reception apart from um, Cameroon. radio reception Maybe from Cameroon. The choice is limited. So you have an absence. So yeah. yes, um, but that is that brings me to Chuka's point. You have a fundamental obligation to provide programming and content Quality. that's relevant to the people. Mm -hmm. NTA, in my view, have not they've not fulfilled close to 20% of that obligation. Mm -hmm. What they have turned themselves into, and sadly, and I'll say this without, with all sense of responsibility, is a government peer agency. Yeah. That's a good one at that. And they're not doing even a good, doing a good job. That's what I'm because saying. I can tell you job. that things that this administration have done and done quite well, yeah. That if you were to if you were to be delicate about it, what you will do is not to start by telling us the president has done this. Tell me the benefit, for example, and a good size to everything. Yeah. Okay, let's even say the so-called border closure yeah. that in some respect... Do some documentary. Yeah, has given rise to some positive things. Start by saying, do the feedback on that. Start it from that perspective, then link it to the government. To the government, yeah. Or education, health. They're not doing a good job. Well, let's, let not, let let's not, let's not, let's not, I mean, so your question in comparison to other, how do you measure them? Not, let's forget about BBC. Yeah. How do you measure them with even stations Nigerian in stations. Nigeria? Nigeria, yes. They're not doing well. But let me, let me come let's, in. Let's not, you mince know, words. let's not mince words. Let, let, let me, let me also come in because I feel, and I'm not, I don't mean any disrespect, but I feel that we mustn't dumb down our expectations. I, I like the fact that Chuka 
Because I, what I see is that he has a commitment to seeing good television by and he even cares enough to do an advocacy on it. Because I don't watch it. The only time I hear NTA is when people use them as a reference for backward practice. Ah, please don't do like NTA. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that's it. And that tells you what they become synonymous with, unfortunately. So when you mention NTA, it's almost like one archaic, one old, okay. you know, you don't want. So they need to revamp themselves and make themselves relevant. When I, to bring in the BBC though, you have to ask what is the funding? Because a lot of times, you know, right. what people are able to do comes back to the funding. And they're taxed. They, it's, some, to, to a large extent, from the taxes people pay, their TV license goes to the BBC. Right. So yeah. we, again, here, yeah, we don't mind if they were performing a service that was uh, service-oriented to give us information, not even as a propaganda machine, to serve us, to give us information and enlightenment and gain access to places in government that other TV stations would not have, to yeah. reports and things. We don't mind. We're happy to tune into them. And, and, and the point he made, that they're an embarrassment, makes, made me realize that actually there are, whether we like it or not, there are ambassadors. You know, so I may not watch them, I may laugh at yeah. them, but the world sees NTA yeah. as a representation of what of Nigerian, Nigerian broadcasting. And so they need to up their game for the sake of our identity, our brand. Exactly. You know, so definitely I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Chuka, and I'm glad that you brought this up because I really do think, I hope enough people from NTA I'm watch this again. and feel enough, you know, feel enough shame to say, look, we can do something about this. We mustn't continue to allow ourselves to fall down this. It's not even mediocrity anymore. No, it's, it's, it's actually down below, below mediocrity. mediocrity. Uh, no, we can't accept that. But uh, is there any agency, government agency, that is doing as well? The uh, NTA is and just so a reflection we, of Nigeria. Uh, so we yes. should accept it. The fact that it is understand? doesn't mean we should accept it. No, I understand. Mm. There's, a, there's a whole lot that needs to be done. Uh, concerning paying a little something, the audience, the viewership for NT, it's mm. in the remote places. They cannot afford the yeah. little something, yeah. something yeah. you're talking they get, about. They get, they get, they get you know, paid. We by subsidize they're, them. They're, right? they're subsidized by the government. Mm. They earn advertising revenue. No, I know. So, it's because of um, government subsidy to, that, is yeah, that, that we have a kind of value. Compared to private TV stations, yeah. yeah. private TV stations they operate in the same market, mm -hmm. collect the same advertising revenue, right. and they're funded also by government. Yeah. Capital as well as, as, uh, as overhead cost. So, and they collect revenue, massive revenue. So let's not you know, um, baby them and say, oh, you should do better. Mm. That's my opinion. Yeah, to watch, sorry, I watch sorry. regularly. I, I do watch yeah. NTA sometimes. Well, just it's like, I, I don't it's, remember it's the last time I sat down to, you know, mm, turn it into NTA <laughs> to watch, but really, I can say for a fact that I think they're also do, they're doing a really poor job. Mm. And I, I don't think that any youth in this present day and time would, you know, tune into NTA because what would they, what would they want to say? And I think also, like um, every government agency, the issue of bureaucracy has, you know, you know, mm -hmm. eaten deep into yeah. NTA as a whole. You know, when you sit down and um, they're putting food on your table okay. for doing nothing. Okay. So, for instance, you look at the private um, f private media houses. You know, you have to work to get to to, um, yeah. to get food on your table. That's you know, a good you have point, to. You know, there's competition. There's accountability. Yeah. There's, there's mm. Accountability as well. So you know, just, just sitting down. Food comes to their table you, from the government, yeah. or whether it comes or it doesn't come. Food yeah, comes, yeah, so you know, you have to, you know, do whatever. Just go on air. Whatever you, you present, the people will take it like that. Oh, yeah. I believe that, that in this yes. world we're living, the role of public broadcasting is even more important. Yeah. And that's, I want them to realize that as well, yes. that the role that they have is, is very strategic exactly. to, to and, building and someone, a nation. Someone even made the, just as a specific uh, correction input, that someone said that the fact that they wanted to be in every state, you know, was also part of the problem, oh, that good. they should have just focused on a few and, and then, then grow, grow from, from there. there. Yeah. Absolutely, exactly, yes. So we speak in an uncompromising way because we have high expectations for our nation, Nigeria. So continue the conversation with us on social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag, the advocate ng or twitter and instagram at plus tv africa hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts go to plus tv africa.com forward slash the advocate and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa as we cross over in the new year let's raise the bar together let's keep advocating for a better society happy new year and goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Happy New Year. Time for another disclaimer. The views of this America, this one you're watching, are entirely his own. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm sorry. Can we, can we do that again? <laughs>
Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah? can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's very, a terrible, very, strategy. very terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.